Hello and welcome. I am Adjudicator Julian and you are watching the DCC RPG Dying Earth live play. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're really excited to be here and for the next 90 minutes to two hours or so, we're going to take you through the Fathoms Under Witch's Isle, which is in the 2021 Adventure Pack. Uh, which will be running all over the place uh, on DCC day, just two days from today. Uh, with that, I am going to introduce my panel of playtesters, uh, and we're gonna, they're going to introduce their characters as we go. So first up, uh, our legendary artist, and we're very fortunate that he's done some incredible Dying Earth artwork for us on this project, Mr. Errol Otis. Hello. I am Clum the Dappled, a magician who was once a pusillanimous watchman, cowardly, who abandoned his post to drink at a local tavern, which unfortunately left my village uh, open to an attack by Gru's. It was uh, grievous, and uh, apparently the village has now posted a reward for my capture, so I have taken to the road. Clum is a uh, a skinny man, and yet in certain parts of his body, his, his skin hangs loosely, uh, for example, beneath his arms and neck. And there, his flesh is blotched with pale white splotches. Thus, he is called Clum the Dappled. Very nice. Clum the Dappled. And he'll be playing our magician in the, in the vein of Rialto. Um, well, level one Rialto. This is a level one adventure. Uh, next up, uh, Judge Extraordinaire and Editrix Supreme, Judge Jen Brinkman, and my fellow podcaster as well. What do you got for us, Jen? Um, I like playing the uh, warlock, or witch, I guess we're calling it, uh, Angus. Um, let's see. I, I may or may not have boasted of a rival's claim to the throne, and I was overheard by the current prince's loyal spies. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm starting out as an accused insidiator as my uh, starting animus here. So, really on, on the right side of things. Uh, I look forward to uh, summoning demons and using ritual spellburn tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and when we're, these little bits of backstory are called starting animus. They're randomly generated for each of the Dying Earth characters at creation. So it's just a little extra Dying Earth flavor to add in there. Of course, when you've been playing Dying Earth for years and you're sick of them, you're gonna make your own and it's gonna be just like uh, butter. It's gonna be awesome. But anyway, uh, next up, we have a man who needs no introduction, but is gonna get one anyway. Uh, also, Judge Supreme, uh, podcaster Supreme, and uh, and writer, developer, uh, worked on Dying Earth with me, uh, Mr. Bob Brinkman. Um, I am playing Odd Kind of the Brute, a martial vat thing. Uh, he has waxy pink skin, although it is it is flawless in appearance other than the pus-like substance that weeps from his eyes and leaves them glued shut by morning. His uh, inopportune hungers have left him indebted to a powerful sorcerer who uh, sends me to do an odd task from time to time. Hence, I am odd kind. Very nice, thank you. Uh, say the name, spell the name for me just so I got it. O-D-D-K-I-N-E. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. And last, but definitely not least, uh, DCC designer and most recently publisher of the Necromolds uh, board game playset thing, which is pretty awesome. Go check it out. Google it. Well, somebody will throw it in the Twitch. That's a cool thing. But uh, Mr. Quint Bohady. I am playing Thimbly the Vagrant. And uh, Thimbly is a kind of a jovial, portly fellow, not very tall, um, wears a big brimmed kind of wild feathered hat. Uh, his shoes are velvet and uh, curl at the ends. And he wears rust colored pantaloons 
in a very fabulous uh, green and black striped shirt. Um, and he, uh, his backstory a little bit is um, he basically travels from town to town on a kind of a multi-level marketing soap selling scheme um, until he kind of gets thrown out of town. And his starting animus is that uh, he, he offended a tribe of desert men uh, with his ill-bred manners, probably related to his scheme, uh, and was run out of town and stole a raft, uh, took it on the river and escaped the, uh, the desert men. And now he's essentially being hunted as he travels the land trying to escape the anger of this, um, of this tribe that he has offended. Very nice. Well done. Thank you. All right. So here is our starting, uh, our starting point for the adventure. As I mentioned, we're doing Fathoms Under Witch's Isle, which is in the adventure pack. Uh, it is a short adventure, but there is a ton of stuff there. It's at least a full gaming session. You might even be able to make it into two. There's a very open-ended first section. We're not going to do that tonight because it's very open-ended. We're going to do the kind of crawly portion so we can really show off the mechanics. And uh, so trust me on this, but there's a lot of cool stuff in the beginning that I'm going to summarize kind of the, the easiest straight path to where we are going to start. So uh, your, the four of you have booked passage uh, to Port Perdue's on a ship called the Kalelon. Uh, and um, in true Dying Earth fashion, especially maybe true Kugel fashion, everything possible has gone wrong uh, the entire way. Uh, but to make a long story short, you're beset by a fierce storm. The, uh, the crew fights the storm for a, a, and a few hours, but ultimately, not only do they uh, surrender to the storm, but they bail on the ship and take the only lifeboat leaving you unsuspecting above decks and then finally discovering that you've been abandoned with the exhausted worms lashed to the sides of the ship uh, uh, for an eventual shipwreck, which is indeed what eventually happens. Um, you find yourself uh, pulled down, assaulted by demons and other maritime uh, critters, and finally washed up on a bizarre undersea ledge. And you find that you're actually submerged underwater on this island. You are in a strange air pocket in true fancy and capital W weird fashion that you can breathe in even though you were surrounded by water and when you're moving you're making little bubbles and you can kind of glub glub at each other that's essentially like speech and cast spells and so forth. So don't worry about that too much. Um, you were underwater and uh, you are getting your bearings. You notice a beam has fallen on a large stone idol that is also on this ledge seems to be some kind of fish piskine humanoid type critter and um, of course moments later these strange uh, limpid men show up on uh, their snail mounts and uh, accuse you of desecrating their god idol uh, which uh, appears that the beam of the ship has destroyed so you are to be ritually dismembered. Uh, there is a period of negotiation, which will, uh, un, you know, unfortunately, we'll have to shoot past that. But to make a long story short, you uh, successfully negotiate away from dismemberment. However, there is a task they'd like you to perform uh, instead of that, which is they'd like you to roust out the mad hermit Sebatos, who lives in a cave further down this isle. The, the island is actually sort of an inverted island, and you are actually uh, crawling your way down, which if it was right side up would actually be up. It's a cool map, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, thank you, Stefan Poe. But anyway, you uh, so you'll be making your way crawling down the aisle, and everything on the aisle is kind of strangely uh, upside down. But uh, at any rate, uh, you are weaving your way down underwater, and uh, the Thracians, these strange limpid men, uh, actually take you straight down to this cave. They know exactly where it is because they'd very much like someone else to go in there. And uh, that is where we're going to start our adventure. The four of you have been pressed into service. You are outside the proverbial cave mouth. For those about to die, I salute you.
Um, so you were standing in front of this cave. I'll give you a very quick uh, description of it. Okay, the path to the cave leads several hundred, for, uh, several hundred feet further up the mountain, past outgrowths of algae, flowering water amanita, and pulsing sea anemones. anemones. Mm -hmm. The mouth of the cave opens into the side of the mountain, a strange luminescent glow coming from within. What uh, would the quartet like to do? Are our captor or those who are kind of keeping us imprisoned, are they still around or have they left us? No, they're kind of just snailing away back up the path um, away from you as you uh, sort of peek into the cave. Okay, and then you might have said this and it might have just went right over my head, Julian. Um, what do they want from um, Sabatus, the mad hermit? Do they just want us to get rid of him? Did they say what their beef was? Um, they say that he is controlling the weird weather uh, around this island, uh, causing storms and uh, terrible creatures to haunt the waters, some of which you've, you would have already seen in the shipwreck portion of our adventure. Um, so, and of course, leaving them trapped on the island, as well as people keep washing up and destroying their god idols, which is really a pain in the butt. Awkward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they, they want him gone. They just want him, yep. All right. Hmm. That can be arranged. Well, we should move into the cave, then we're in brave odd kind. Yes. <laughs> Let us move in. Um, Julian, since we're uh, moving in and we don't know what's going on, I'm actually going to take a moment and cast. All right. Let's I'm let's going... let's talk about casting. So you, the that thing has got how many spells, Bob? Two? I have two memorized. Spells. Two memorized spells, and you're doing rote magic. Mm -hmm. which means you'll be casting a, pre unlike DCC where you roll a spell check, you'll be casting a pre-memorized spell. At a, at a pre-memorized spell check. Exactly. And, and I'll be casting Fundal's Mantle of Stealth. And you've got the spell provenance on that? Uh, yeah, let's see here. The provenance, yes. Um, when suffering from a melopropism that causes a misfire, such as a natural roll of a one on a spell check or amplification roll, I may choose which misfire effect to apply. Oh, okay. So, uh, Does pretty... not apply in this case, then. Indeed. Okay. So... And the spell provenance for those watching is uh, basically the sort of dying earth twist on mercurial magic. So there's a whole range of new, of new mercurial magic results coming, uh, which are dying earth flavored. And uh, well, and you've just, you've seen that in action. You'll see a few more of those. So uh, my result, which is a 16, gives me a bonus. Um, I become extremely stealthy, giving me a bonus to checks to hide and sneak equal to two plus caster level. So plus three. Okay, excellent. And what is the duration on that? Uh, one turn. Okay, excellent. And all right, so you guys are all outside the cave, uh, but... At this point now, Oddkind has uh, cast the spell. Um, everything looks good there. Uh, Oddkind, you you guys were saying, well, let's move in, but nobody kind of was like, I go into the cave. So oh, I, 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 I think the, the cry was, let's move in behind Oddkind. <laughs> yeah, we we, we, guys are we all look good. to Oddkind. Uh, okay, Oddkind, you are- uh, I can so die, I get back. Are you moving into the cave now? I am, but I am treading softly. So I'm I am, uh, trying, you know, with, with the spell, I'm trying to move quietly so, as to perhaps gain gain a slight advantage. Yeah, go ahead and roll me your um, stealth check, please. Okay, which I roll on a d16 because it's an untrained skill and I'm a that thing. That's a 14, 15, 16. So I have a 17. Okay, uh, what's your armor check on that? Oh, that's right. My uh, oh gosh, we didn't listen here. Let's see. I'm wearing hide, so that is three, I think. Three, probably. Yeah, three sounds right. Three is good with yeah, me. Minus three. Okay. So, so I have a fourteen. Fourteen, very good. Um, okay, I like it, and very good. Now I'm not going to do any note passing and such like. Uh, <laughs> odd kind, you go into the cave. 
the lights that you could sort of see outside, you could see some kind of illumination uh, sort of moving inside gently uh, and slowly. Uh, as you enter the cave, you see shimmering orbs of light. Uh, and they're moving in a almost hypnotizing fashion. Uh, so I need you, please, to roll a will save for me. Hmm. I suppose my perpetually gummy eyes give me a bonus. I don't think that. They may refract the light and actually increase the... I have a 14 again. Okay, very nice. Um, you have made your save. And you, uh, you feel a, a moment of uh, fascination just kind of overwhelm your senses, but you, you shake it off uh, and you're inside looking at these lights. You see a, uh, let me grab my map here. It is a uh, roughly circular chamber uh, about 60 to 70 feet across. And you see a 10 foot opening carved into the rock on the other side of the chamber. Um, it's lit by some green fungus as well as all these moving uh, orange or and pink and green globes all around. The sides of the room are uh, heaped with algae and fungus and there are little snails you know, tracking across the walls and the floors and the ceiling. I will, I'll, I'll immediately turn back as, as everyone was, was following me, and I will first point towards Klum and then gesture to everyone. Eyes, shield your eyes. Mm. Okay. I will pull my wide brim hat a little lower uh, and shield myself. All and, right. And the cowl as well. Yeah. Try to look okay. at the ground. <laughs> Odd kind, you got them now. They're easy pickings for you. It was that easy. <laughs> it was that easy. All right. Um, no, this is good. So uh, are, are you guys entering then? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, you, you folks, uh, everybody enters beyond odd kind. Uh, you're standing in the room. Uh, you're, protecting your, uh, you're protecting your eyes, mm -hmm. which is good. And... Um, yeah, I think that is going to be very good. Now, let's see here. I think we're going to go for, I think um, I need you, Bob, uh, odd kind that is, to roll me a saving throw at whatever your lowest bonus is. Not like there's a whole lot of variation, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at first level, you know. So I've got a 13, my lowest save is a plus one. I once again have a 14. All right, very good. This uh, is the thing. <laughs> so I've used um, two different dice. As you, as you enter uh, carefully, uh, you hear Odd Kine, I don't know. Odd Kine, you can tell me what kind of sound you make or what you say, but um, you suddenly lose uh, uh, two points, excuse me, three points of agility. Oh. You, you feel a, 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 just an enervation energy wash over you. Um, and you hear a little... Like someone oh. casting. Oh, you, you're not sure it was a cast as much as just a maybe a gremlin-y... Um, Mm. Pant of delight and success, and maybe a taunt in some subworld language, um, mm. or maybe just pure gibberish. Uh, I will look is, around and see if I can find the source. If it is subworld, uh, that's right up my alley. Mm, uh, no, actually, sorry, it sounds kind of like that, but it is definitely, yeah, you, the witch, can say it is not a subworld demonic okay. type uh, language. Do we all hear the gremlin this? as well? Yeah, yeah, this you is guys, wrong. <laughs> you hear it. Yes, you do hear it. Uh, Bob, you look around. Um, make me a, an intelligence check, please. Okay, how about something other than a 14? Well, okay, that's not a 14. I have a seven. Huh? Um, yeah, you don't, you kind of do a quick scan. You're looking, the lights are moving, it's hard to see. 
um, you are not um, picking anything up here. I'm going to just quickly go down the ch uh, just in kind of window order the way I'm looking at it. So, Errol, what would you like to do? Can we tell where the, the sound is coming from? Kluma, make me an intelligence check, please. Well, I rolled a four. I uh, know you kind of strain your ears, but you're not able to detect exactly where it's coming from. Do I add my uh, caster level to that? You'd add your intelligence bonus, Tell whatever oh, that intelligence is. bonus. So I do have one. So it was a five. Yeah. I know, nope. I know. Yeah. Nope. Uh, no. You. Yeah. You're not able to tell. Um, anything else you want to do? Uh, so we're all in this room together now. Yep. Uh, I'd say odd kinds a little in front, and everybody a else. In front. Everybody else is kind of. You were covering your eyes. Yep. 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 Can I cover my eyes and, and and look like toward the opening? You know, there's an opening, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, certainly. Uh, how brave are you? Huh. Well, I want to move toward it, but not enter it. Let's okay. Uh, got it. So you're just, you're going to start moving over in that direction. Yes. Okay, great. Odd kind starts to move toward the opening, which is basically directly across the room. So you want to just take a straight path? Clorm, Clorm will do that. Okay, very good. Uh, very good. Anxious, what would you like to do? You know, <clears throat> my I have a pact with uh, Theo. A, a, I suppose you would call him a, a dark entity, and he's really big on staking people through the eyes when they dare to look at him. Not mm. knowing what this language is around me, I'm going to keep my eyes shielded, and uh, Angus is going to follow Clume likewise. Okay, very good. Um, Anxious goes on behind uh, Clume, and anything else you want to do? That's your kind. Of, that's your move action, more or less, right? Yeah. Um, not knowing exactly uh, what what we're up against at this point, I think it's better to just try to get a better vantage and uh, get get this over with as soon as possible, so we can get back to what we were doing. Okay. Uh, Thimbly. Yeah, seeing my companions making their way further in, I do not want to fall behind, so I will jumble along um, behind uh, Ingsus, and when I do, I just want to be looking um, kind of like Kloom was. I'm going to see if I can figure out where this little voice came from. And in, while I'm doing that, I'm also just getting a general sense of, if, is there anything else that stands out in this room? You know, as I'm looking around, like, where did it come from? Yeah. Uh, make me an intelligence check, please. All right. Uh, it's going to be a nine total. All right. Uh, yep. Uh, nobody. Uh, yeah, you have not. Uh, you don't detect anything. Um, at this point now uh who's got the lowest luck in the party i'm at a 10. anybody well, lower than a 10. i've got an eight okay oh well that sort of makes a certain amount of sense actually i need i need you to make uh that same uh reflex check oh uh, i think it was a reflex save you said uh, you had me make a save at my lowest at your lowest yes which, which for me is fort oh okay there you go That's going to be a 12. All right. Yes, that is not going to make it. That is going to be so that is stamina intelligence. Uh, that is two points of intelligence. How oh, hard lost. And you, uh, at this point, I uh, hear this. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you, you're, you have the feeling it's taunting you. Uh, your companions are kind of moving semi-blindly off to the opening that you had spotted. What do you want to do, Adkan? And now that I've heard it a second time, do I have any better idea of the direction it's coming from? Yeah, give me, uh, give me an intelligence check, please. Oh, wait, I have a minus one. Um, now that I'm at minus one, that's a 15. <laughs> uh... Oh, okay. 
Uh, that's pretty good. Um, you get you get an you you don't get a great idea, but you think it's off to your left. Uh, excuse me, to your right, and you know maybe somewhere between five and twelve-ish uh, feet away, somewhere up, you know a few arms lengths away from you to your right. Right. I'm going to unsling my battle hook and move in that direction. Okay. So very good. So um, odd kind takes out the battle hook. Are you saying anything, or do you? Are you just uh, motoring? I, that I honestly think the grunt of me throwing that thing into position says enough. Rawr. Yeah, that's yeah, that's probably true. All right. Rawr. So um, here's what we'll do. Let's everybody roll initiative, please. And I'm gonna throw it up here. The what dice? Uh, D20. Okay. Except for me, I'm rolling on a D16 because the battle hook is a two handed weapon. Ah, yeah, indeed. And okay. Uh, anybody over 20? Anybody over 15? Anybody over 10? 14. 12. Thanks, this is 14, and odd kind is 12. Uh, Klum, where'd you end up? 10. Klum is on 10, and Thimbley, where'd you end up? Five. Five, okay. Those of you who are not odd kind, please remember that your eyes are mostly covered at this point. Um, Anxious, you're up. What do you want to do? Interesting. Uh... You know, I, I think the best thing to do at this point would be to summon reinforcements because my vision is not fully clear. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to come out of the gate with demon summoning. Okay, very nice. That escalated quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I just... You know. Um, interestingly... Uh, I, I almost wonder if, if I should be forced to spellburn for something like this, but um, hmm. In, yeah, that's an that's a good thought. Definitely, that's not how this is written, so I'm gonna skip that for now. I'm I'm just gonna try it slowly. Yeah. Right then, uh, so I'm gonna throw two points towards it, and uh, one of strength, one of stamina because I need a, at least a 16 to get this puppy off. Hmm. Okay. So a grand total of a <clears throat> 11. Uh, no, I'm not spending five luck. Right. So, are, you, are you happy with that roll? I, <laughs> you're hilarious. I'm going to take a point of demon taint, mm. which will be added to any demonic corruption rolls. Uh, you know, next time I roll a one. Uh, yep. I say next time because it's inevitable. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Very good. Um, great idea. Poor execution. There you go. So the demon, yeah, demon summoning is a core uh, spell that every witch gets. There are spells that you get uh, that you get to choose on your spell list, as well as curses. And there's also demon summoning as basically a, a core ability. So uh, it's kind of fun. All right. Uh, Nope. Anxious, you're keeping moving toward the door? Or not? <clears throat> what did Odd kind end up doing? Uh, you're about is to he find like out. middle of the room uh, he, uh, at, he, at this point? Well, you, you know, he's somewhere, you're like this, and he's like, oh, so he's behind here, me. Okay, so. never mind. Yeah, um, but... No, I, I will stay put. Okay, so case. you're, you're going to stop here? Yeah. Very good. Odd kind, you're up. Um, I will allow you to make, let's see, you're not blinded, um, but he, you know, obviously you can't see him directly. So we'll call that a minus two dice to attack. Minus two dice. Okay. He, uh, why can't he see him? Maybe I don't know that. Well, it's the thing is invisible. Whatever is tormenting him is, oh, is essentially invisible. Never mind. Yep. Um, is it actually invisible? Because that's normally a minus four. 
Or is that a oh. minus eight? Crap, I find it. Never mind. I'll take two dice. Oh, um, because, two dice. because I get to add my pattern die since I am a, uh, a marshal that thing. I add my pattern die to hit and damage. Let's see if I can find this thing. Well, maybe next round. I have a five. Okay. I'm assuming a five does not hit. That is not going to do it. You uh, you hear high pitched gibbering, which I'm not going to repeat every time because I might get a little disturbing or a little stupid, so I'm not going to do it each time. But you do hear that kind of high pitched triumphal gibbering as the battle hook uh, swings past it. Uh, uh, I'm assuming you're going to stay engaged with this thing uh, at this yes. point. Yes. All right. Clume, uh, you are up. Um, you were the first to start across the room, if I recall. So you don't bump into Ansys when she stops moving. But uh, you probably hear this sort of combat-y stuff going on over there, although you're, uh, you're still covering your eyes. Yeah, I'd been following Clume. I'm going to uh, move toward the opening and look in it. Okay, very good. Uh, Clume crosses the room, and uh, with uh, you, you get to the opening. You unshield your eyes, mm. and you see a corridor um, going it's about roughly ten feet wide. It's a you know, uh, not carved stone, but semi regular, uh, semi irregular, uh, you know, cave opening type thing, and it goes. Uh, straight about 20 feet and you know gradually curves off to the left and that's about as much as you can see it goes off in the left direction about 30 to 40 feet okay. uh, and you, again the sides are just crawling with snails and little algae seaweed from every direction and all that stuff but uh, yeah. other than that you and everything is kind of moving and pulsing in the current of the water but you don't see anything oh. coming at you directly anything like that okay for now Keep watch down that corridor. Okay, very good. And uh, oh yes, it's uh, time for you to roll that fourth save, Bob. Please, uh, unless you've got a different lower save at this point. Um, no. All right. <laughs> that will be an eighteen. Oh, okay, very nice. This time you feel the uh, you feel it um, that enervating. Uh, thing wash over you and you uh, but you resist it uh, maybe you're a little better prepared for it you steady yourself and uh, yeah you it does not have any effect on you and you hear some <laughs> curse words and so on uh, mm. from that direction uh, Thimbly you are up what do you want to do you are more in the middle with uh, Anxious at this point and you can of course tell that there's some kind of melee happening over that direction yeah, uh, Fimbley is uh, easily frustrated in the fact that he's walked, kind of stumbling along in this cave, semi-blinded from his wide-brimmed hat, is irritating him. So he's going to kind of, I want to lash out and with my rapier and try to hit one of these like lights that's kind of just bobbing around the room and see if I can strike and shatter it. Okay, excellent. Um, being pretty nimble, um, it's not, it's, it's not super easy to do it while you're, um, uh, you know, hiding your eyes. Um, you take a few good, you know, rapier strikes and you're pretty sure you hit one of the glowing lights moving by you, but you're not a hundred percent sure. Cause you're not unshielding your eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, given that, you know, they're moving fairly slow and they're pretty bright. You're pretty sure you hit it and it just whisks through it like there's nothing but this sort of airy water there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. Anything else? Uh, you can also move if you'd like. I'll uh, huff and puff in frustration and uh, keep keep close to the rest of the group. Um, well, Anxious, Anxious kind of stopped in the middle and Klum is, uh, you know, like a... a uh, around movement at the at the opposite opening, so you could okay. join him. You could join him. You could join Oddkind fighting something over there, or you could stick with Anxious in the middle. Um, I will. You know what? I'll kind of make my way over to Oddkind. Okay, very good. I hear him grunting, and he sounds like he needs some help, and I just want to get out of here. So whatever I can okay. do to help him. Very good. Um, so Thimbley is going to join Oddkind and. 
Anxious, what do you want to do? Oh God, me again. Um, hmm. Well, now I'm all by myself. That's great. Uh, hmm. Is it possible to make my way over to where I hear the melee happening? Oh yeah. I would like to take my uh, ritual spear and oh, join nice. the fray if I might. Oh, very good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will have you roll minus two dice if you're just going to try to get in on whatever uh, odd kind swinging around at there. Oh, because of the vision thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, are you going to, are you, I'll what tell you what, wrong? I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'll give you, um, well, that's true. You're not even looking. Hmm. used to the darkness it's fine what so tell me what you'd like to do are you gonna are you gonna uh pull, pull your call up and look or are you and try to see it again or are you going to uh, yes yes okay. I, I would like to try to you know make an intelligent attack <laughs> as okay. opposed to just so the witch i like it the witch is blindly. going all out now here's the fun part first i need you to make me a will save please oh good lord about that uh we're just gonna call that a fail it's it's not a crit fail but it's a well okay it, it's a nine all right anxious uh anxious kind of stop pulls up her spear uh says something Vancian and starts moving over towards the uh, melee but then uh, she you know she throws caution to the wind so she can try to see and spear this thing but she sees the she's assaulted by those multicolored orbs and she's like oh pretty oh very nice very nice and she just kind of comes up short uh, while, while Thimbly beside her just advances into battle it's um, light fixtures again Bob <laughs> Uh, odd kind, you are up. Oh, you're on mute, Bob. Humans, I'm going to continue attempting my uh, my attack. Okay. I'm nothing if not persistent. Ooh, uh, that's going to be a fifteen. Oh, nice. That is. Uh... Ah. Are you happy with that roll, Bob? Considering I rolled it on a D14, and this is a first level adventure, I'm going to say I'm happy with it, Julian. Uh, you missed. Oh, wait, actually, uh, I'm sorry. That'll actually, I've got a strength bonus. Uh, so actually, I'm sorry. I, I don't have to be happy with that because that is not a 15, it's a 17. I apologize. Oh, brilliant. Ooh. Okay. Well, in that case, you have hit this thing. You have hooked something. Uh, you, you apparently your mistake was you went too high the first time and you swung back low and you've hooked something around either the neck or the midriff about three feet up. Uh, there's sand and seaweed flying around where you've kind of got this thing. Now uh, you're gonna because you're using a battle hook, you're you've got to roll to grapple this guy, right? Yes, I get to see if I can grapple him. And I'm gonna rule that you use add both your strength and your martial pattern die because obviously that would make sense. I'm not 100% okay. sure if that's the rule, but that just makes sense to me. Well, that's gonna make him pretty miserable. That gives me a 19. Ooh, well, he rolled well, but the 19 is still gonna beat him. So you have uh, you have got him. What do you wanna do with him? You've got him well, grappled. First, you can't first see I wanna him. damage him. Yeah, well, roll your damage. Uh, ooh, six, seven, eight, uh, 10 points. Ooh, nice. Yeah, you have definitely got something. And not only did you wrangle this thing, you look feels like you plunged the hook into it. Um, and you hear the ah! um, it's not dead because it's still wriggling around and struggling in a non-death throws kind of way. How close am I to the wall to the nearest wall that is covered in stuff? Uh, you are 20 to 30 feet away you you uh you you haven't moved and so you, if you want to uh, you've got him on the hook so if you want to just go over to the wall that yeah i want to that. push it against the wall because since there's all that all, all the seaweed and snails everything yeah. else as it pushes against the wall we'll be able to see where it is okay very good 
uh, yeah, you uh, you you kind of drag him to, with your using your grapple over to the wall and uh, press him up against the wall. Nicely done, uh, uh, Quinn. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to use my nimble ability to clums clums up. But I get to interrupt. Uh, oh, you get a, order. no, you do get a, a interrupt. Thank you. So so <laughs> that's being, the that, yeah. hold on hold on though. No, yeah, go say. ahead. That is the that is the wayfarer does get once an encounter to interrupt. He's so nimble that he actually gets to interrupt and interject himself into the initiative order. And mm-hmm. after that, it's a, after the interrupt this round, he goes to the bottom for all subsequent rounds. Which um, so, was that anyway? So great use of that. Yeah, <laughs> which, is a, which is an excellent use in this case. So yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so Fimbley is never one to uh, let up on an opportunity of trying to steal some heroism. So I'm going to, <laughs> now that uh, uh, Oddkind has him up against the wall and I'm right up there with Oddkind, I'm going to, and the, the light sources are at my back now, right? Because we're right up against the wall. Yeah. So now I'm going to kind of look up from my hat and I know that odd kind's got this thing hooked because I heard it probably scream, you know, oh, yeah. I heard the struggle. And I'm going to stab that with my rapier and try to also do damage to it now that we've got it in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rule that as a, a D16. It's still invisible, but it's much easier. You can kind of see it in the fronds and at the end of the battle hook. It's just a little hard to know exactly where the limbs and torso is and so on. All right. So, so uh, roll wonderful. D16, add your and you're also a finesse fighter as a wayfarer where you can apply your agility rather than strength to a melee weapon to attack. Excellent. Um, let's see. I thought I had this. Um, I am going to, I'll just do a digital quick. Roll a d6. Or, or do d, d20 and ignore it over. D8. Perfect. I'll Hold do on. that. Uh, well, that would have been nice. Not oh my god. Okay, there we go. An eleven. Of course, now all my big rolls come out when I'm using a D20 for a D16. Uh, I got an eleven, so it's gonna be a twelve to hit. Uh, that's not gonna do it. I'm going to um twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, I'll burn three. I'm gonna burn some luck. Okay. How many I'm gonna you... I wanna try to off this thing, I'm going to burn um, three D3. All right, okay. uh, because of my Wayfarer skill. So I'm going to burn three luck, which lets me roll three D3 for my luck. OK, very good. Um, so let me roll that. Nice. Three, six. Wow, eight total. So an eight bonus on top of that. So it's going to be a 19 to hit. That is a hit. You hit this thing, hit. you stab it through with the rapier, you hear this <laughs> you see some some puffs of like inky smoke uh, coming out of its body. Um, you don't it does it's not like solidifying or becoming visible, but uh, but the, you can more clearly see and it's kind of half stabbed and half hooked and grappled against the wall. So definitely getting easier. And then um, the lights are flickering now. These orbs are kind of flickering on and off. And roll damage, please. All right. Uh, it's going to be a three again. It's going to be three, uh, six damage. Nice. Very good. Uh, let's see what this guy thinks at this point. Uh, siege. Hmm. He is really upset with both of you. Wait, doesn't Klum go next? Do I go? Before? Oh, I'm sorry, Klum, you are up. No, it's Remember a Wayfarer there were 10 too. It's a Wayfarer too, and it gets no, <laughs> Klum, you yeah, are sure. up. So, oh, so the lights are. I see minions, the lights. Your minions seem to be handling this just fine behind you. So you know, I mean, <laughs> those with the nothing. Nothing's coming down the corridor, and the lights behind me are flickering. So I think maybe I'm going to move to uh, the wall where the action is happening and try and strike the okay. creature. Yeah, that sounds excellent. OK. Uh, but are you going to, are you going to uh, uh, do Look. a, yeah, are you going to unshield your eyes or are you going to fight blind? OK. No, I'm going to unshield my eyes. I'm hoping that the flickering lights will be less powerful now, but we'll see. They are less powerful, so your your will save is going to be on a d24. Oh, I have a 
have that. Here we go. I, I rolled a seven. Okay. All right. Are you happy? Would you like to stand on that? Or, uh, well, I don't. I. I mean, I got that, That's too much luck to make me happy. Okay. Uh, well, you're going to go to Anxious's happy place, and where you guys are, you know, hold hands, running through fields of brilliantly colored clover. I like. So this and, is actually uh, pretty. This is a pleasant experience. I mean, in a yeah, it in a sense. Would have been worse. Yeah. At the moment. At the moment. Just going to go with it. Yeah. Relax. Okay. Uh, so Klum rushes up, but as he gets up there, he just kind of, oh, and, and stops about 10 feet off. Meanwhile, this thing is spitting and cursing very angrily, and hmm. Bob, it is time for your uh, save. Uh, for it, if that's still your lowest. Yes, yes it is. Okay, so what happens to me naturally? <laughs> All right. Well, we I got are... this many. <laughs> okay, Ooh. it's going to be stamina again. Oh no! That's actually the first time you got agility and intelligence before. Yeah, this stamina can get ugly. Yeah. Two points of stamina is drained. Um, it is madly wriggling and trying to get free of the battle hook. I don't think it has a very good chance. Uh, make me a strength check and add your pattern die, Bob. Do you want me to roll a new pattern die or just keep the two that oh, I already Oh, you know had? what? It can't free itself. It already uses it. It only has one action round. Ah. Forget that. Well, okay. it sucks to be it, him. Yeah, it sucks <laughs> to be him. He, he lashes out at you with his enervating power, its enervating power to no effect. And I'm Finley assuming goes, since I've got it on the hook that I, I'm not a, uh, going to be at a disadvantage this time. Um, yeah, that is a correct thought. So, uh, yes, uh, Anxious is still um, fascinated. So, Oddkind, you are up. What would you like to do? Um, well, I've, I've got it hooked. So, uh, when, I, when I hooked this thing, did I get any idea, like, how heavy it is? Uh, it's, you know, um, the size of a medium dog, maybe. But standing up bipedal, roughly, you know. So, maybe. it weighs, like, maybe 50, 60 pounds? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, so I'm, I, I don't get a deed, but descriptively speaking, I'm going to step towards the wall so I can just take the hook from where it is against the wall and slam it across against the wall. So let's call, so roll to hit, and what we'll do is your regular hook damage plus a little wall damage on that guy, if you hit. Three, a 16. That is a hit, so roll the hook and call it a... D3 plus your strength again for slamming into the wall. Oh, man. Um, well, before I get to the wall damage, I've got 10 points. Okay. You just tell me how it does then. You, you kind of have the wall, me, so. the wall is going to do an additional five. Okay. So I, I literally, you know, I've got it against the wall. I move up, I twist, and I just pull it from the wall and slam it back against the wall, splattering in a spray of perhaps becoming visible gore, perhaps not invisible gore. I don't see what the problem is. It's literally. like it's like a halfling made out of squid parts slams mm. into the wall, kind of rubbery, just jiggling there against the wall, ink spurting out of it. Um, and it, it, it has this, like, you're underwater, right? So it's little gremlin-y sounds. It's like, and the head actually pops off when you impact the wall with it. Um, more blood and ink, and and the thing just kind of quivers on the end of your uh, hook. It, very dead. The lights wink out, leaving you in a soft uh, green, um, you know, kind of phosphorescence. Very low light at this point um, in the room. Uh, this thing is dead, very dead. Uh, no aura glowing orbs, and Anxious and Clum, you guys are freed of your fascination. Okay. Is so, go ahead. I was going to say we'll examine the room pretty carefully. Maybe this thing has some belongings if it lived here. Holy smoke. Um, you do a, a quick uh, check of the room and you find um, nothing in this room of very, uh, that's very interesting at all, except over in one corner by the, the hall that leads out of it. 
um, there are some hash, what appear to be like hash marks on the roll, you know, like <laughs> one, two, three, four, cross, one, two, three, four. And there are um, 15 of those. Hmm. Hey, Julian? Yes. I'm going to I'm going to rip open the chest of the corpse and in a vain attempt to to gain my attributes back, I'm going to rip out its heart and devour it. <laughs> because I do have inopportune hunkers. Okay. Um, yes. I'm sure it does nothing but make a mess, but still, you know. Um, yeah. Oh child. Oh. <laughs> make make me a luck check. One. Okay. Uh, you have you have regained three stamina from Ooh. your uh, heart I only, eating. I only lost two. Okay, well, you have got two stamina. Uh, you have regained your two stamina from eating its almost beating heart. That's not in the adventure, by the way, but I, I like <laughs> I like that idea. So we're gonna go with it. So the creature itself has no Chewy. accoutrements or possessions on it. It's sort of a wild natural thing. It looks like um, this is an excellent place for the magician to step forward. The magician is a pandect and uses his uh, love cat. It can add his caster level, whopping one in this case, mm. to anything where intelligence is a help. So uh, you can make an intelligence check to use your pandective knowledge to see uh, if you can determine what the heck this thing is. Pandective uh, nine nine um yeah it looks there's something kind of artificial about it but oh, that's about as much as you, ah, as you're getting that would make sense then since it has no possessions it's some sort of perhaps a construct of the hermit a guardian placed here we should move mm. down the corridor actually when clue mentions that since that things can recognize constructed creatures on site mm. is it a constructed creature Ah, indeed. It is some kind of homunculus, uh, like a very exotic, like not one you've ever seen, may not be of that grown, but, uh, but it is some kind of strange sea-adapted homunculus. Yes, Clume. This hermit is more than uh, we have been led to believe. All right. What do you guys want to do? Move. Yeah, well, oh, head, to, yeah. head to the hallway. How long does your spell last, um, Odd, Ken, for your... It lasts for a turn, and, well, combats are rounded to the nearest turn, so that's... Darn. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you guys, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move us along here. So you guys have... Uh, you, you move down the corridor. Uh, you find an opening uh, that goes into another room. In there, you can see, pardon me for reading a little tiny bit of italics. The tunnel opens into a large chamber filled with an underwater forest. Encased within are the submerged tree trunks. Uh, wait a second. Encased within the submerged tree trunks rising from the floor are dozens of pale forms. So um, yeah, sorry. I. I Turning the page, I lost my place. A tunnel opens into a large chamber filled with an underwater forest, enclosed within the submerged tree trunks uh, in the forest, rising from the floor are dozens of pale forms. So these weird underwater tree constructs seem to be like grown around bodies uh, that are held. And they look bloated and dead and, you know, like watery kind of decaying and that kind of stuff. Are there maybe 15 of them? Yeah, you know, the italics says <laughs> dozens, but as it happens, there are 15 of them. Okay. <laughs> are they moving or are they stationary? Oh, they are very stationary. Some okay. of them are like, so like three of them are like uh, kind of just half grown over and less decayed. And then like four of them, like furthest in are like totally, you can just see little patches of skin. Can we tell do they look like the what did you call them limpet men? No, uh, well actually, like mm -hmm. the four furthest in look like the orange limpet men, but the mm -hmm. some of the other ones just like like sort of regular human shades, you know, uh, varying uh, human shades, uh, which in dying earth are probably just about every freaking color there is. But mm -hmm. um, 
and yep. and can we get a sense of this forest is is there a ceiling at all like is it just a giant giant cave room and is yes. there a pe- is to this space or are there many exits can we get a so sense the, of that this is being a demo game and a short one this there are no other exits or anything of interest in this room you guys do searching you're good players you do all that stuff you don't find anything okay cool um did you say there's no exit there's uh there's no exit but the, the hallway continues beyond uh sorry errol i, oh. didn't, I didn't mention that or yeah i don't think i mentioned it but it kind of elbows off from this room and oh, keeps going. oh okay sorry Let's my proceed. bad very good. Um, Nothing yes. to see here. Move on. <laughs> right. So, uh, so you guys proceed down the hall, and you come to kind of a you come to kind of a the the hallway comes up like this. Over on your left is an open doorway beyond which you can see darker water, and uh, and it's not very lit. So it's like you're stepping into a different kind of water, is what it almost looks like. And this mm-hmm. green phosphorescence, this kind of low light that's following you through the hall. It doesn't really go into that space in that water. Um, and then the hallway continues. And then the hallway continues uh, okay. moving off to your right. From so it's kind of <laughs> kind of goes up elbows and then goes off back to your right. And it looks like that's beginning to ramp downward. By the way, hmm. uh, when it goes down from the uh, from that little cave mouth where the water has a different texture. Right, yeah, so should bypass the the darkness and proceed down the corridor. Yeah, this room seems not even the light wants to pass into that room, so it feels pretty deadly. I I would be fine bypassing it. Oddkin, not afraid of the dark, but I can walk forward instead. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. Anxious, did you have any other idea? No, sir. All right. Very good. Um, you follow this ramping corridor down, uh, and you come to a another room. Um, and let's just say you're 20 feet away from the opening into this room. I believe there is no door. Just double checking my map. Uh, you can see some. Uh, cr- what you can see from about 20 foot out is that there are some kind of crates. Um, You're looking into a chamber that opens up. Uh, It looks pretty big. So it's gotta be at least maybe 70 feet across once you get up to that open doorway. So uh, it looks fairly large and you see um, five crates in there uh, that look about four to six feet tall, uh, ranged along the right-hand wall as you're looking into this room. And the, ra- the ramp kind of comes down and then kind of flattens into a floor uh, like that. Hmm. I would like to kind of... And, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, there's, and by the way, as, as it kind of opens up, so that crates are like the part of the room you can see, but the rest is kind of obscured from your vision, right? Because you're 20 feet up from the doorway at this point. Um, I want to take a second as we're getting closer to this big opening, you know, this doorway that opens into this bigger space, and just like try to listen for any of those chittering type voices similar to the, you know, the homunculi we encountered in the first room. You know, yeah, kind certainly. of a, acutely listening for something like that. Certainly. Uh, go ahead and give me, please, a, um, a, an intelligence check, please. All right. Uh, 14. Oh, I'm pretty good. Are you uh, are you happy with that, or do you want to make it interesting? Yeah, no, I'll keep it uh, not interesting. I'll keep okay. it boring. <laughs> um, uh, you you hear something. You think you hear something inside the room. Um, quiet. It's pretty quiet. You don't. You can. You just with that roll, you can't really quite tell what it is. Might be, but you just maybe some kind of rustling or jostling or something. Okay, I'll I'll whisper to the rest of the party then, like, I think I hear something ahead. That's Russian. All at once and surprise it. Overwhelm it. <laughs> Feast on its bones. Certainly, my friend. Do do any do any of our characters have good vision in the in darkness? Is is that thing or any of the more magic characters. 
Uh, I don't think so. Just curious. I'm pretty yeah. sure my vision is crappy. Is but the, the, this room isn't any darker, right? There's still the... Actually, the the fungus on this wall in this room is um, seems to be um, have some brighter crystals and stuff mounted on the wall that are giving a better luminescence than the, mm. the low lit hallways. Let's go right behind you, Aunt Kelly. Yes. Left or right? Where am I? Where am I rushing? <laughs> yeah. I'll wait for Gloom to point me in a direction. Into Why the you have to watch me go? Into Which direction, Fimbley? Into the crate. Uh, the, uh, Julian, are the crates up against the wall, or is there space behind the crates where we could kind of move? Yeah, they're up against the wall. Up against the wall. Uh, I'll kind of look, and as Gloom points to me, I'll be like, uh, that, that direction, and uh, point just beyond the crates. You know, as far as we can see, obviously. Right. Okay. And and how far away is that, Julian? At this point, um, you like the nearest crate would be you know thirty to forty feet away from you. The furthest one you could see would be uh, you know sixty feet, maybe fifty to sixty feet away from you. And and which one is is he pointing at? <laughs> how far away is that? Whichever one is. <laughs> My, my, I keep my point very vague. <laughs> I say, of course, no, I can just... just like a wave. Yes, <laughs> that way. Yeah, okay, well then, I'm going to that rush way. that way. Uh, <laughs> uh, since is this round, I, you know, I don't have a target, so I've got nothing to attack. Um, however, <clears throat> I am going to, uh, to take this time then to burn some personality and invoke my creator. Oh, very nice. Mm. So invoke it since all bad things, like Bob's character, Oddkind, are created by a magician. Um, Bob has got a sort of like invoke patron for wizards and elves in DCC. He's got invoke creator, which lets him call on the wizard, sorry, the magician that created <laughs> them and get their help. Um, very much like Pandaloom in the first Dying Earth book, of course. And you got to roll, you got to burn X number of personality, whatever you right, like. Right, because, because instead of a roll, it's 10, 10. plus my level, yep. plus, plus whatever I burn, yep. uh, modified by my luck modifier, and I have a luck of eight. Mm. So my permanent modifier is a minus one. So yep. that's nine, plus my level is 10. So I'm going to burn four personality. While howling, Korgoth, cursed be thy name. Someday I shall devour your soul, but until then, you will aid me. I guess we're not going to surprise it then. Huh? <laughs> and uh, with, a, with a 14, I get a plus two to attack and damage rolls for the next turn. I mean, okay. we're surprised. Does that kill him? <laughs> yes, yes, it does. And by the way, uh, for those watching, uh, at, at my level, I can invoke my creator once per week. Yes, yes. Indeed. Very nice. Very nicely done. Okay. Um, so Oddkind, you're invo uh, tell me how this looks. You're invoking first and then charging in? Or you're I'm, charging I'm, in? I'm actually doing this as I rush forward. Because again, I don't in. have a target to attack. So, yes. my, you know, so it, you know, the, the hook is up, but I'm not, I'm not you know, like mid-swing because no, I was told awesome. to attack in that I'm direction. Not I'm about to solve that problem for you. So <laughs> beyond the open doorway, you see workbench with, so now you're, you know, you can see the, as you charge in, you see the whole room, right? Um, so beyond the open doorway, you see workbench. This is what's kind of screened from your view uh, with a dozen slowly revolving glass canisters containing proto-human creatures in various stages of fetal growth. Some other types of vat or glass things like yourself, aren't kind. Uh, a vat filled with an oxygen-rich algae stew is connected by copper pipes to the canisters, and set next to the opposite wall are five open pens, each containing a deformed monstrosity that rises to attack you as you enter the cave. So Glad I got that plus two to attack and damage coming. <laughs> so let's everybody roll initiative, please. Right. Yeah, All right, and who is uh, anybody over 15? I'm an 18. 
Ooh, fancy. Right. Nice. <laughs> Thimbly is at 18. Anybody over 10? 11. Clume, you got an 11. Very nice. And where'd you come in, Adkain? 13. 13. And Anxious, where'd you come in? Seven. 13. Okay, it's going to be Thimbly, Oddkind, Clume, Bad Guys, uh, which actually tied Clume, but I always give the players the tie, and then Anxious at the end. So, Thimbly, you are up. Now, you see, you, you have just watched Oddkind howl and invoke his creator. He kind of beefs up, roids up as he snarls into the room, and five of these moon calves horribly deformed, failed vat thing creatures rush out at him, uh, obviously envying his superior design. Mm. Uh, Kimberly, you're about 20 feet away. What would you like to do? Yeah. Uh, are they still a distance away from odd time? Uh, well, you do. Let's see. Because I'm thinking I would like to shoot my arrow gun if I feel like it's safe. I'm not you know, I feel like there's enough distance between Odd Kind and these creatures that have just risen out of these pens. So uh, I'm going to need you to make me a luck check to see if you can uh, draw and get ready to fire before one of them is in melee with them. It's mighty that's, nice for Wayfarer that did not want to fire into combat. Yeah, <laughs> I know, is. I know. So I don't want uh, Odd can to do, uh, be down so yet. So your luck check die starts at a 20. So go ahead and make me a luck check. Yeah, and my luck is currently seven. Ooh, go. nice. Oh, re and a four. I succeed. Okay, very good. Uh, you have succeeded. Now your luck die is going to go up to 24. Yes. Um, and by the way, your party luck is what? You have spent... I'm the only one. Well, I guess I, I spent three. You spent three. So party I'm the luck only is one. three, right? Okay. So for those watching, as people spend luck, uh, we are got some crazy wayfair luck stealing mechanics to deal with, but not yet. So uh, you made your luck check. There is one that you can zap with the arrow gun. Uh, go ahead. All right, I'm going to take a shot with the arrow gun. Uh, <laughs> I got a four again, uh, so not as good this time. That is uh, going to so miss. Do you want to move, or are you going to stay put? I will. I will move up to the opening so i'm kind of like just in the room a step in the room and i'll keep my arrow gun out just to see okay. if i'm potentially able to take another shot before i have to get into melee so yeah that's what i'll do okay that sounds good um odd kind you are up there are five of these things getting that are swarming out toward you uh you are feeling juiced up uh what would you like to do i'm going to rush at the closest one and say i shall free you brother i'm very nice <laughs> uh, make me a personality check, uh, Bob. Okay. And add add your pattern die, please. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, 17, 16, 17, 18. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you a D24 because he's startled and shaken by mm. your your uh, the way you assert your fellow vatness. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> To 22 on the die, plus two, excellent. plus two, plus two. So uh, 28 to hit. Please, please is, tell me I hit. <laughs> that's going to be a good hit. Uh, roll me your damage, please. Is it still Battlehook? Yep. All right. Go ahead, please. And uh, give me a letter A through E, whichever one you're attacking. I will take B. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine points of damage. Woo! You stick it with the hook. Are you going to try to grapple it? These guys are significantly larger than the little guy you were fighting. I don't think so. I'm not going to try and grapple this guy. If they're, you know, they're closer to like my size. Yep. They're human size. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm, you know, unless he's got a weapon that I might try and disarm, I'm not going to try and, uh, and grapple him. So you stick the hook in him. This thing with like two mouths on its face in different places is going, one of them is going, die, die, die. And the other one's going, brother, 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 die, die, brother. Um, and Clume, you were up. You see uh, him 
uh, engaged with these creatures and um, he's about to be swarmed by them, but he did really- He's about to be what nice by them? Swarmed. Swarmed. Mm -hmm. um, but he took a really pretty good chunk out of uh, letter B. Uh -huh. uh, what would you like to do? How far away am I from them? You are uh, 20 feet up from the door of the hall and the big scrum is probably about 15 feet inside the room. So okay, you're so roughly not, uh, 30 to 35 feet away. All right, I am, uh, Klum will uh, employ the excellent prismatic spray. Oh, brilliant. And what is the provenance of, on that? Yes, uh, yes, yes. So unfortunately, uh, I guess- uh, Do I need to shield my eyes again? <laughs> no, it's not gonna help, no. Uh, as I cast it, I'm overcome by infectious merriment, courtesy of the laughing oh. magician, I believe. Right. All creatures within 30 feet must make a DC-5 will save or lose an action as you recover from the shared conviviality. Yeah. So I guess everyone's going to be, hopefully yeah. not. I wonder if the bad things have a sense of humor. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, good. They get Everybody make effective. a DC-5 save. I'm also going to try and... I do uh, not have a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm going to amplify this spell as well. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so amplification is a way that even though it's rote magic at a learned result, you, get an amp you have a high die and a low die. You roll your amplification dice, and if they come up with a high result, you get to boost your spell check. If they come up with a low result, you get to you will unfortunately end up lowering your spell check. It's a little bit of a gamble, but when the chips are down, it's a way to try to boost your, uh, your results. So uh, how does it go, Errol? Excuse me. I have a high die three, low die one. Nice. So you so got, a, you got a boost. Three. Uh, two. Cause no, it adds a... three. Yeah, sorry. Is it the difference plus one? No, no, um, it's, well, I'll read it once again. Um, if, if the high die is higher, you add it. If the low die is higher, you subtract that. Um, you, yeah. you take the different, you, you subtract. If both dies shows one, the spell is lost for the day. If the yeah. down die is larger, the caster subtracts the value of the down die. Yeah. If the die is equal or larger, the caster adds the value of the up die. Both, yeah, oh, so there's, there's no subtraction. Subtract. Oh, yeah. okay. Brilliant. So At you least get three. for the rule book. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Pr brilliant. So I think that might have changed. So that's good, actually. Um, anyway, maybe so that's... Uh, it's clearer, right? Yeah. It's a little simpler. I don't know which way you're going to go in the end, but right now it's plus three and level plus one memorized at 14 makes it 18, which is two beams. Two beams. Very nice. They may be cast at different targets. I think I will cast one at the creature odd kind has already damaged. Okay. And one at another. I can pick orange, blue, or red colors. Both will be blue. Okay. Um, in this case. So uh, the, um, the, cre the two creatures must make a DC 10 fortitude save or suffer a minus. 1D penalty to actions for a certain amount of period of time. Okay. They also each take 2D5 plus one damage. Okay. Well, you, um, you were going to kill letter B. I think that is a done deal. B has perished. Good. B has perished. So <laughs> you can roll on, uh, you can choose A, C, D, or E, and then roll your damage on whichever. I guess like. whichever, whichever one is closest to me. <laughs> <laughs> that seems good. So kind of the one in the back. Yeah, that makes, we'll call that letter E. Letter E takes eight points of damage. Very and nice. A saving and, throw. Uh, and actually, I need everybody, before I do that, I need everybody to make me your DC5 uh, laughing roll. We'll say. Already did. I don't have a sense of humor. Dimbly, did you make it? I failed. Oh, so oh, no. what's the duration on that, Errol, please? It's Boy, just the, one action. Just one action. Okay. One action. So, um, and then these guys, let's see. DC 10. And I'm oh. sorry, what's the difference? What, what does DC five versus DC 10 mean? Oh, oh that's oh. The, the, the number to beat. That's the goal. Oh, wow. You don't have to beat a very high one, do you? 
versus my laughter. Yeah. My goodness. They have to beat a 10, yeah, a little better. Okay. Julian, for each person who rolled a one on this saving throw, would we get a grunge token? No, not on the grunge, not on yeah. the uh, GM. But uh, one of them did miss it. Actually, I thought I th I, first I thought it was more than that, but then they get a plus two will save. So, okay, very good. So uh, one of them is doubled over with laughter, um, and so he'll miss his attack, which is just the next thing in the round here, uh, Errol. And then what does the orange beam do, please? Blue beam. He has to make a saving DC ten save, uh, or you suffer a one minus one D penalty to actions. Wow. For uh, and that will last three rounds. Okay, he made that. Uh, so enough. But one of them is definitely laughing, courtesy of Ayakunu, the laughing magician, and he looks in the letter E. Yeah. And letter E looks pretty messed up. So at this point, uh, Bob, you've got four attacking you, but one is helpless with laughter. So three attacking you. What is your armor class, please? My armor class is 14. Okay. Likely says, it's not enough. Is it also well, well, we're about to find out. These are plus four to hit. Hmm. That and is while a hit you adjudicate and a hit. that, Julian, um, yes. I'd like to call out uh, Yamil, Yamil, Yamil for subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay. These guys have uh, gone a little hog wild. They all crash into odd kind with their ham, ham fists for a whopping 19 points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> that, they are strong and uh, yeah, aggressive. They have- I'm just gonna lie down here for a while. <laughs> Good. Ooh, have... Okay. Yeah. Can we can we spend a uh, grudge a grudge token to have them re-roll? You can absolutely them? spend a grudge token to make any of them. There were three of them; they all hit. So all right, I will spend one can... of mine. Okay. I will spend one of mine. Okay. That's right. We all start with one, don't we? Yeah. I'll spend one of mine. <laughs> all right. So here we go. So here's the deal. Um, and grudge tokens, you can. I think it makes sense to force a re-roll in this case, but you could also all spend them on the same one. Forced to reroll, and then each one could reduce the die if you chose. Do we have to declare that. spending beforehand? Sorry. Do I have to declare spending it beforehand? Uh, before before reroll, re yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Bob, yours is d still a hit. Clint, yours is still a hint. That's uh, still a hit. Ouch. And arrow. You're <laughs> going to keep this die for the next time I play. Um, wow. Okay, then. Maybe less damage, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Does it re-roll damage? Well, why not? Do you want me to re-roll the damage, job? Why not? You well, do I want, do, does Bob <laughs> want you to? Yes. Do I think you need to? Maybe not, but I'll tell you. <laughs> you're getting that much damage. It's one less. It's, it, yeah, well, if they're plus four to hit, they probably have a pretty good damage bonus too. Yeah, that was six, 16 this time, but I think that's still going to be too much. Yeah, yeah, no and damage. Yeah, for for all three of them combined. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, holy cow, this is yeah. a, a level one adventure. <laughs> what did we do wrong? <laughs> are, you, are you reading this adventure along with me? Yeah. All right, odd kind goes down. Anxious, you're up. What do you what do you want to do? Uh, you see Oddkind go down. He's in the middle of a scrum. One of them is doubled over with laughter, and he started laughing before Oddkind went down. Oh. There's still one of these guys is very torn up, and one of them is dead. So, shoot. Are we operating under the same normal DCC rules, where as level one, you have one round before you perish? Uh, let's be really, I mean... If you want to kind of do your transfer vitality thing, that would be a fun thing to demo. I'm not, Bob is going to be flipped and survive this encounter no matter what, right? But, you know. Well, I get, I get a second luck roll. And you get a happens. second luck roll as well as a vat thing to emerge out of your creator's vat once more, whole and intact uh, at a later date. Shoot. Yeah, no, he's really the one that's been saving our bacon. So I should probably attempt to transfer vitality. Okay. Um, so I will make my way over to 
uh, the direction of the one that's doubled over laughing. Oh, very and nice. And I'll kind of like swim my way between to reach down to him. And oh boy, uh, you don't get a save because you're probably going to be willing, even if you were conscious. So um, it's, that's fair. It, it's one action and. Uh, so this is like for those watching this is like here. a cleric's lay on hands except the witch is actually sucking the vitality out of this creature and pouring it into her ally uh odd kind the vat thing she could also use it to heal herself or she could also even take her own vitality and use it to heal as well or some, whatever, so whatever i still else. have to make a roll yep you um, still make I, that check i guess the uh i guess the laughing thing will get a will save won't it yeah you know or, at a reduced at a reduction let's just yeah say. because it wouldn't make any sense to take the vitality from myself and transfer that so. no 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 of course not no 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 fial would never let me hear the end of that plus plus you could lose vitality yeah uh so i've got a total of 18 on the check and oh nice your critter needs to make a will save versus 18 he does not save oh good um, so at the end of the action, then, um, character name, Oddkind will get one hit die back in healing. Very good. Nice. Roll it, Oddkind. That's and a D10 for back, I yep. believe. And your critter, I believe, takes a minus Seven. one across the board? Well, actually, six. I'm minus one for magical healing due to my <laughs> lucky roll. <laughs> Not so lucky roll. So letter letter six, D. Six. Yeah. is minus one die so yep got it jen thank you is that minus one die across the board for, for or, or is it just minus one yeah tonight minus one tonight die. is minus one die so we're good i like that better anyway okay yeah thimbly you are up so you've currently got in front of you one doubled over the laughter who just got vitality drained one who has been torn up by prismatic spray and two more who are looking at they as if they want targets, uh, and the witch is right up there with Oddkind, who is just reviving right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I look at Oddkind, kind of reviving, and then I look at my arrow gun. And I go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're um, low. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, he he can. He's a bad thing. He can always come back again. Uh, you don't. You 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 don't miss, right? <laughs> no, no. Of course, I don't miss. I I hit with style. Um, I am going to take a shot. Um, one question I have for Julian, uh, does my nimble ability, which lets me jump in front of someone in initiative, am I able to use that when I am the leader in initiative? Can I use it no, to jump backwards? No, not, well, you could always hold your action, but you could do that anyway. Okay, okay, that's true. Um, all right, excellent. Well, I am going to go ahead and take my shot. Okay. And uh, I'm going to so shoot at the prismatic spray one. Okay, great. Uh, it's going to be a 17 to hit hit and that is going to finish him off nice. so there are three left one is laughing and weakened the other two are in good shape odd kind you are staggering back up to your feet uh what would you like to do um can i see the, so three of them attack me um i'm gonna look at d with hate in my eyes and i'm gonna gut him like a fish with my hook very good no, he's he's the uh, laugh. He's the one who's at weekend. Yeah, he it? thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Take your shot. Yeah. Uh, so that's a nat 20, Ooh. 24, 26. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Um, just tell me, uh, tell me how it goes for him. I'm gonna split him from stem to stern. <laughs> Like the hook I'm, under I'm, the. I'm getting up. I'm just going to take the hook yeah. from, from the groin to the chin, straight up as I rise. Okay. Um, yeah. Interestingly, he he sort of just splits like a rotten fruit right up the middle, um, and for some reason his ribs are like moving around as they open up across his belly and Lap chest. It up, and, funny boy. And he's uh, he he you know splatters backward onto his back, kicking and struggling, but he's still laughing even as he dies. Um, however, there are now two left, and that brings us to Clume. You are at the doorway pretty much with Thimbly, I would assume at this point. 
So Anxus and Oddkind are still up there with the two remaining ones, and you were back with Thimbly. What would you like to do? I will flash him with pure passion and unleash my force of will. Oh, wow. All right. So you'll need to burn at least one personality. But I can burn as much as I want? Yes. And those add individual, like burning three adds three. That's yep, different. exactly. Let's do that. So you're, bur you're pouring out your raw will onto these guys, and the uh, fluctuations of pure magical energy will be harnessed against them. Uh, the great thing about Vance is you can just kind of make up some words if you want, you know, so, without looking them up. Uh, three, four, 22. Nice. Oh, that's, that's going to be. Do you want to just take out the party? <laughs> no, it's a single. It's hey. no, no, no. It's a it's a single target effect. Uh, I think, yeah, it breaks against the target. I think there's okay. some higher ones that do more than one target. It does two d10. Nice plus level. Non magical objects the size of a small chest or boulder automatically shatter, unless they make a DC 14 fort save. 15 nice. points of damage to one. Oh, yeah. Uh, would you like A or C? Whichever one's closer to me. Well, I'm going to say we've established the uh, lower, the further letters are in back. So C. C just explodes uh, into a shower, vat goo, and uh, synthetic parts. Quitter. He, it is no more. And we're getting to the end of these guys. There's one guy left. I'm going to make a morale check for him. See how he's feeling about this whole situation right now. Which is not very good. So he, um, he falls prostrate at the feet of Anxious and Oddkind and doubles up his hands and says, no, but please, please, brother, please do not harm me. I am just a but humble moon calf. I cast. So I'm going to cast the spell of Macroid Castigation because okay. it just seems perfect. Uh, well, hold that thought. Well, we're sort of out of combat for the moment, although Anx well, Anxious... Anxious, you, you've got to move, but if nobody else wants to do anything, we can go straight to spell. Yeah, because I don't plan on doing any combat other than the spell. So. All right, go ahead. Um, so let's see. So first of all, uh, as I cast this, lively music accompanies the casting, potentially notifying other creatures of my presence. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. My result Wait. is a 16, and I am casting it on his lower lip. Which Aww. will uh, increase in size. It swells to fifty percent larger, becoming a discomforting deformity. Um, actions taken, which in this case would include speaking, um, directly impacted by the growth, suffer a minus two penalty. Okay. And then once I'm done, be gone. All right. You're uh, a big meanie. <laughs> he. Uh, there, sorry, there is an exit in this room, and he scampers as fast as he can uh, down the exit and down the down ramp out of this room. Um, okay. So, so to move us along, we're at about the ninety-minute mark, and we have one short encounter left, as I bet you were guessing. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put us in fast forward mode here. You guys search the room. You obviously find that there are these vats, these copper pipes attached to the rotating canisters and so on that they were trying. It looks like this guy was trying to breed vat things. Maybe there are some homunculus mixings that he used to create his friend Gleft in that first room with all the orbs of light. Um, but the pens, these five pens, of course, are now empty and their denizens are, four of them are spattered across the floor. Uh, and there's really nothing else of too much interest in this room. Uh, there is an exit on the opposite side, and uh, if you will allow me to move us along, uh, take a little, take control of yourselves for a slight moment, you wend your way down the ramp, down the next corridor, uh, and you come to a, um, let's see, duh, 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 duh. 
uh, you come to a a room. Uh, in this room, uh, you see a basically the hallway opens into a stone chamber, and you've gone down a fair ways, probably another 50, 60 feet, and the, the ramp has kind of angled back around. You've come out into, uh, this is terminating now in a round chamber, and on the far side of the chamber is another, an opening into another of that weird darker water that you saw before. Um, so extending from the cliff face into a column of that open water is a 20 foot rock ledge, which is lit by a blazing green fire. In the center of the ledge next to a dais of stone is a cowled and bent figure. As you watch, the figure holds aloft a wooden staff and begins weaving and reeling in a grotesque underwater dance. As he does so, an adumbrated dark shadows, oh, sorry, adumbrated dark shadows can be seen flickering in and out of the light of the strange green flames. And um, Adam, letter A, I'm just going to call him Adam, uh, with his cast uh his his growth lip is uh is cringing in the back of the room uh looking hatefully both at Oddkine and at his master um mm -hmm. as you four enter um he seems to be enacting some kind of, this figure seems to be enacting some kind of ritual with this crooked staff uh but as you enter he whips around clearly aware of your presence and he says, I detected you from the movements in... No, no, sorry, he's got a French accent. He says, I detected you from the movements in the water. <laughs> Die. Uh, let's roll initiative, <laughs> please. All right. I need to against that accent. Oh, <laughs> wow. I have a two. Just go ahead and skip me. <laughs> I have a one. I go after her. Wow. <laughs> okay, That's pretty then. impressive. All 14. right. What'd you get, uh, Errol? 14? 14. Kloom got a 14. And Clint, where'd you end up? I'm at a 19. Nice. Well, so much for jumping ahead of anybody. I know. I just, I'm naturally nimble. All right. And then, sorry, which uh, odd kind and excess, which one went first? I go last. Okay. Odd kind last and excess on two, right? Very good, and that will put us at uh, Thimbly. What would you like to do? Boy, well, he definitively said die to us. So I feel <laughs> like there's not much room for negotiation here. Huh. So uh, I will, um, you said, I'm going to, he's still a distance off. I'm gonna use, I still have my arrow gun out. I'm gonna shoot an arrow. Okay, sounds good. Uh, go ahead and please give me uh, give me an attack roll. All right. Uh, excellent. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Uh, that's very good. Uh, you will uh, roll damage, please. All right. Uh, D six damage. Uh, four damage. Okay. So Setbos, the Mad Hermit, has taken four damage. Okay. Very nice. Uh, would you like to enter the room or are you going to hang back at the doorway here? I'll, uh, I'll enter the room and I'll say, no, you die, as I shoot the, uh, both his verbiage and my arrow at him. All right. Very good. Uh, and I'm just kind of considering that you guys are basically uh, just at or inside the, the doorway, which is about 15 feet across as you're in, as you're seeing the tableau ahead of you at this point. So you're, you can move, of course, on your action, but otherwise that's, you're kind of ranged up in a row. Um, so Thimbly is gone and Clume, you are up. What would you like to do? So how far away is he from the doorway where we're standing? We'll call that, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll call that uh, about 40-ish feet. Can I, how far can I move and cast a spell? Uh, you can move up to 30 feet uh, as a regular move and still take an action cast. That's what I will do. I will move 
forward 30 feet. So I'm 10 feet away from him and 30 feet away from my friends. Okay. And I will invoke Penguire's triumphant displasms. Oh, very nice. Now, this one has a, a uh, provenance courteous of, courtesy of Palacius. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Indeed, all creatures, all spellcasters and magical creatures will just take 1d5 damage. Doesn't appear to be any saving throw. <laughs> I would assume that includes this hermit. None of my friends who are 30 feet away. Oh, right, right. Okay. Uh, yes, he will also, yeah, go ahead and roll me a d5 for him. Three points. Okay, very nice. And um, I'm going to try and amplify this once more. Very oh, nice. I, I can do that over and over, right? Yes, amplify. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because if you fail, there's definitely repercussions, yeah. <laughs> so, so both are threes. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be really ugly. That's pretty brutal. So that's so in that six. case. So let's talk about the rule just for a second for those watching, because we're about to execute it. So when you when you max out both the up and down die, you take the sum and you add that to your uh, memorized result. So that'll be a plus uh, six to your memorized result. And then um, I get a plus one for my level, right? Just level. All that stuff's in the result that you've memorized already. Ah, okay, okay. That's good to know. Um, so six, sorry. But imagine imagine a magician who's fifth level and your amplification dice are going to be like D10s okay, or good. something. You yeah, yeah, be... so it was, at, uh, it was at 18, so six is 24. Yeah, oh, that's... So yeah, the that's displasm is pretty fun. Two demon arms protrude from the afflicted, one from the chest and the other from the back. Each uh -huh. round, both appendages attempt to strike any allies within melee range, using the caster's attack bonus. Um, so would I roll for that now? Yeah, I think so. Go ahead. I'm going to let you take... Um, why don't you try to have those guys... I'm going to... We'll say that these are going to attack the uh, caster. Yes. Uh, the set of us, that is. So go ahead and roll uh, your kind of stand, straight melee attack okay. uh, twice and for each arm, and then we'll go from there. The arms, okay. Uh, 18 no, and 15. Those are unadjusted. I don't think I have any strength. So 18 and, and uh, 13. Okay. Uh, 18, 18 and 15, sorry. Ooh, that's going to hit it definitely. Definitely once. That is two hits. Very okay, nice. so, so one to three. Yep. Yeah. Plus one, three and two. Five more points. All right. The arms are quite pesky and try to hold the victims. Weapon arm, cover his eyes, pull on nearby objects, and otherwise interfere with the victim, inflicting a minus two D penalty to all actions. Oh, That's all right. Minus two to all actions. One uh, and it lasts for one d four plus CL rounds, two. Okay. Two rounds, great. So this is going to be round one because he's up. Uh, nicely done, very nice. And the Kickstarter is live. Apparently, it's doing. We're well, already nice over already. halfway to goal. Very nice to hear. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to all those who are watching and supporting right now and backing. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, nuts. I'm um, glad in it. Sword, the unlucky and uh, J Bobo eighty nine. Thank you for your subscriptions to the Twitch channel too. Y'all rock. So we are. This guy's up and he is pointing his staff. Let's see if he has to do. Let's see. He's going to whip his staff out and point it in Klum's direction. And where does it say what it does? Da, 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 da. Silver concentrate plus e! two. Fire. But he's at minus, oh, but he's minus two dice. Oh, oh, oh. that's ugly. It's not gonna do it. There we go. 
Uh, and what is your armor class, Kloon? Uh, padded. Uh, oh, eight, 11. Excuse me. 11, okay. And uh, he's, he's putting this kind of swath of silver energy ripples out uh, in a cone that is... Da, 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 da. Missile fire, 20 foot cone. Actually, it's not going to get anybody but Clume, but it does get you. I need a fort save, please, for Clume. Fortitude, I have a plus one. 16. Oh, wow. Okay, you made your save. Uh, you took no damage, but you are going to. Uh, actually, you just feel a, a pain wash over you. Uh, for a minute as as the silver affects you, but you're like, ah, I throw off the pain, you will die. Um, uh, the next thing he does is he gestures with it and he, he does like a whoosh, like this, like uh, Odd Kind was doing with the battle hook with his staff. And you, you're like, what are you doing, man? You didn't even come close to me. But the water all around you suddenly picks you up and starts rushing you out into the dark water behind him on the ledge. Mm. Mm. Um, so for that, uh, please go ahead and make me a fortitude save. That's another fortitude save? Yeah. Uh, sorry, reflex save. Oh. No, no pluses for this one. Eight. Are you happy with that roll? No. Um, burn luck. Burn luck. Burn luck. Yeah, okay. We, we can't do anything with the grudge tokens. There's to no, no grudge token okay. on a failed check, only on a successful check. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, wow. How do you, I guess in the context of, well, it seems it's easy to burn tons of luck in an adventure like this, doesn't it? In a one mm. shot, yeah. In a one shot, if you still have luck and you die, it's your own fault. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm familiar. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I will use seven. All right. Um, you, become, you become pretty unlucky, but you do somehow fight off this torrent of water that's all around you. Um, and at that moment, um, the cringing, um, uh, the cringing moon cap in the quarter, um, doesn't do anything yet. He's not, uh, he's not brave enough yet. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Sabatos is done. Anxious, you are up. What do you want to do? Um, oh shoot. That's right. I go right before Oddkind. Uh, <laughs> Simbly, that kind of, you can take it all in Simbly and take a first, measured right? approach. Yes. Um, <laughs> a measured approach. Okay. Is anybody face to face with him, uh, uh, with this hermit I'm guy? I'm 10 feet away from him. Yeah, Klum's 10 feet away from him. Okay. Um, my goal is to cast darkness behind the hermit in such a fashion that he won't be able to tell where the ledge drops off outside that archway. Okay, interesting. Um, and I roll that on a d24. Yep. Because oh, yes. that is right in line with my packed entity. Indeed. Oh, good. All so, right, me and my entity are going to have to have a talk. Um, well, I've got some luck. Hang on, I've got a nine. Eh. Yeah, I only need a 12, so I'll, uh, I'll burn three luck and make okay. that go off. Uh, it's just a 20-foot radius, uh, but the area right behind this hermit guy goes completely pitch black. Very good. The, uh, it explodes into blackness behind him, uh, and he is definitely um, uh, looking about. Uh, ah, 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 ah. But uh, yeah, uh, what what is what is happening? Uh, Odd kind, you're up. Quick question: uh, How much how much luck did you spend, Jim? Uh, three. Three. Oh, okay. there you go. Now we got to make a roll. Now we got to see a little luck stealing in action. For the record, actually, the Kickstarter's hit its funding goal. In 10 oh, minutes. Nice. Yes. You guys rock. I um, love this community so much. <laughs> so because of my Wayfarer ability, I actually regain 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I regain 13 luck and um, and uh, Anxious's 
luck spend just becomes nothing essentially unfortunately so, yes unfortunately thimbly has stolen your luck you you have spent it but you did not get the benefit of it and thimbly you have you 13 probably takes you to your max you don't get extra luck but it i was probably... i was down to three so oh <laughs> and uh yeah oh. and and clume so you the... you only clume you only spent three luck out of your when you burned all your luck you actually only spent three the rest came out of my pool that's oh, true fascinating yes what okay so my spell didn't go off after all no no unfortunately not he but uh, i'm feeling really good so yeah. <laughs> i'm feeling super no, unfortunately, lucky you you basically gifted three luck to the wayfarer huh all right yes. we'll remember that when you fall <laughs> uh, that may that may be a future grudge token in there somewhere so the darkness does not appear uh odd kind you am i up. actually close enough to reach this guy uh what's your movement 30. um i'd let you charge but you know how that is you would be at a i'll, plus I'll take two. the take the plus two minus two to my ac you bet yeah let's do it get out that pattern die uh, my my boost for my creator is gone that lasted for a turn okay uh, it's going to be 12 13 14 15 16 17. that is a hit roll damage please Six, seven, eight, nine points, and I do want to grapple the wizard or the magician. You bet. Okay, nine points is pretty good. Um, you have, uh, you have, you 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 charge up there. You have to do this weird. Actually, you probably get them on the end if you're, you know, like if there's a hook end, but there's probably a sharpened point at the long end too. You know what I'm thinking? Because it'd be hard to use your momentum to hook, you know? Anyway, whatever. Um, you, um, what I'm trying to tell you is whatever end you were grappling him with just went right through him. He coughs up some gore into the water and he's just, he just kind of wriggles and you know, just kind of fish-like uh, uh, makes his, um, um, makes his, uh, death throws huh. and uh, vomits blood into the water and end um, to him and his cursed creations and as he does so um the moon calf from the side seeing you do this rushes in in a paroxysm of rage shouting no betrayer betrayer you killed the master and rushes up at odd kind swings a giant ham fist at you and misses completely oh, thank god <laughs> thimbly, you, thimbly you were up crazy crazy, crazy um bad things. i am going to i see that thing run over it uh oddkin and odd kind and i'm gonna take a shot at it since i've got my arrow gun out what could go wrong or actually you know what even more fun i'm going to release my the excellent phrasmatic spray <laughs> that i that i have saved up so okay all right, yes, the, the Wayfarer has memorized the excellent prismatic spray prior to tonight's adventure, but the way it works for the Kugel character, the Wayfarer, as you might remember at the end of the eyes of the overworld, he's not a very good spellcaster. So he's memorized the spell, put it in his brain with rope magic, but he doesn't really know if it was successful or how successful it was. Can be anything from a crit to a fail to uh, you know massive fail, that is, or um, any level of success. So, um, Thimbly says, excellent prismatic spray, and uh, casts it off, and uh, the good news, Clint, is, um, such as it is, you got the lowest result on the chart. That was your, you did spend a little luck when you memorized, so. All right, interesting. Um, so, I will, I've got the lowest result, so um, 12 to 13. Um, I will, I get to choose a miscreant to do damage to. I will choose the other vat thing. <laughs> and uh, the the evil that thing and Adam. Uh, d d Adam and do one d three damage plus uh, one because of my lucky roll modifier. So it's gonna be one d three plus one. Uh, it's gonna be two damage total. Okay. Very good. And yes, you zap him for two points of damage. He's howling with rage. Although his howling is, you know, he's got that. Anyway, his macroid castigation is probably gone by now. Um, Thimbly, Kloom, you were up. You were actually somewhat close to this thing who's uh, lamely attacking uh, Oddkind so far. What would you like to do? 
the staff. I'm going to pick up the staff. Oh, very nice. Uh, yes, the staff. The staff is just actually. It's not dropped on the floor. It's floating in the water. And as you think about picking it up, it starts to kind of float over to you just ever so slightly as if Towards it's- me? You know, just like, oh. just, just maybe, it's, maybe it's just random chance, you know? Wonderful, I grasp it. Okay. Um, yeah, you grab the staff. Um, I need you to roll me a will save, please. No. <laughs> Will save. I have a plus one. Greedy, greedy. Five. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Uh, you grab the staff and you realize that this is the staff of Sebatos, the Mad Hermit. Um, and you can use this. Um, you can use this. Uh to spray a silver cone of pain on people to manipulate the water currents in here. Um, you're pretty sure if you destroy this staff, you will uh, destroy the entire island and free everybody of this cursed place in true action movie fashion. Um, but you also hear you, you also hear a voice in a, in a fairly bad, badly done pseudo French accent going, no, use the staff. We can live together. Use the staff. Use the staff. Okay. Uh, that's probably your round right there, I would okay. say. But you, you're pretty sure you know how to use this if you want to do something with it. And that and odd kinds of, or no, the thing is at the very end of the round. So, and the guy is dead. So, Anxious, you're up. What do you want to do? You see uh, Klum fascinatedly looking at the staff while Odd Kind is being attacked rather ineffectually so far by the last moon calf. Uh, what would you like to do? Is the body of the hermit still within this er area? It hasn't yes. like floated off somewhere. No, it's floating, but not. it hasn't really moved away significantly. I would like to uh, go to that body and raise it, you know, in the water. Buoyancy isn't a problem. Right. And offer it to Thiel as ritual spellburn. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So you will do your spellburn sacrifice. Uh, and um, yes, you will uh, gain some spellburn from that. Very nice. And that essentially lets me bank it for future use. Indeed. Okay, very nice. Nicely done. Um, not very worried about odd kind over there, so let's see how that goes. Yeah. I kind of what I'm do you gonna, like to do? I'm I'm going to I'm going to raise myself up in my pink waxy perfection, stare at the moon calf, and scream, "Kneel before your new god!" <laughs> okay, uh, are you attacking or just using? No, I'm charming? just using just charm and force of will. Just, All right, use I'm not a, force of will. Force. Make me a, a personality Small check, man. please. And you know, I think uh, you can add your pattern die because this is a bad thing. And you're a marshal, you know, you're doing an intimidation with your marshal die. That's a 15. Okay, I'm gonna give him a will save against your roll, which is probably- While you're doing that, we surpassed our first stretch goal of three new spells. Oh, very nice. We have over 340 backers. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna keep him busy for the rest of the year. <laughs> Keep it going, guys. All right. Mama needs a new car. <laughs> All right, here we go. He's trying to beat a 15. Not e How about a five? No. He, <laughs> he throws himself on the ground uh, in abject terror. He says, no, brother, do not hurt me. No, no, I, I, I'm innocent. I never attacked you in the room. I never would have done that. I am, but a, I am friendly. I'm the friendly. He's usually on a roller coaster. Yes. He's with me now. <laughs> all right, you have picked up a moon calf. Uh, a he gets a staff, I get a calf. It's all good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. And I get a sacrifice out of it. It's all you good. You got a sacrifice and- uh, Okay, but what does Fimbley get out of it? That's the big lost. question. You, you Let me see that staff. <laughs> I think uh, Klum has a staff and Fimbley, I'm not 100% sure. Um, Fimbley has a witch that hasn't killed him for stealing. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's true. 
So that's a very abbreviated version of Fathoms Under Witch Isle by Mr. Bruner, who has been our project leader and uh, Dying Earth rules guy. So thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, good job. And uh, everybody who's been watching our show tonight, thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate all the support, both uh, on Twitch as well as, of course, uh, on the Kickstarter. A uh, big project, and on behalf of myself and uh, Mark and Joseph and everybody who's been involved in this, and Errol, who's wait till you see that art really in your hot little hands. You, you guys, it's yeah. it's fantastic. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in and for backing us for all the support. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, that's pretty much it. Is there anything interesting coming in the Twitch that people want to say or ask or anything else? We've got a couple minutes before we uh, bug out. I don't know, but my email just got filled with all the comments on the Kickstarter. So we are close, <laughs> We're closing on the second stretch goal, which is another oh, three man. And we're up to backer 191 at least. No, we're at backer 370. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the chat here on Twitch. Uh, so ah. was bragging of their number 191. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Almost 400 backers so far. You guys rock seriously. Um, as you know, a whole, whole lot of love and sweat and tears has gone into this project and, and maybe blood. I'm, I'm not going to speak for everybody. So yeah, this is going to be so awesome. Yeah, does anybody have any mechanics questions about what they saw? Yeah, if there's any, any we can certainly... We're here. Yeah, we're, we're here, man. I mean, if if some of you have minutes. to go, we understand that too, but uh, we're here. Or, you know, we could just go over to the official Goodman Games uh, Discord channel and pop in chat over there if you want. Or we could even start our own gather town thing. Yeah. I think I'm going to be... Too much work. I'm going to be visiting the Scotch cabinet, and that's going to be my first order of business. I'll pour myself a little log of willing. The and excellent prismatic Scotch. It's the excellent prismatic. The excellent scotch. single malt. That scotch. is my that is my plan. Um, yeah. Well, thanks again, everybody. It's uh, it's marvelous to see. I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, and I, I and. To be fair and really honest, I didn't ride roughshod over the rules any more than I do in a normal DCC game, I think we could say. So hopefully uh, that was uh, appropriate. Um, I don't think I've played the game that you've wrote before, Julian. Podcast. Huh. No. Kit Catcher, you, do you want to do you, you want did, the, You uh, did in the Nowhere City one a long, long time ago. That's right. Way, way, way back. What was that? Oh. I'm curious if Kit Catcher wants a devoted DCC Dying Earth uh, podcast or uh, just some uh, some new Dying Earth related episodes. Oh yeah, Kit Catcher, uh, chime in. We should definitely have, we need episodes at the least. That is for sure. Oh, Sanctum's got a few surprises coming. Yeah. Most definitely. And we're almost to 40,000, man. More uh, spells. Actual play. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, that'd be interesting. Mm. Julian should run the actual play podcast. Like a campaign. It's, you know, Julian speaks fancy and or Vance wrote in Bernickian, one or the other. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I'm, I, I don't think my judging is up to Vancey and elocution always. Um, I, I would what endeavor. What just came out of your mouth? <laughs> I would endeavor to do my best, but. I am not sure that I'm the paragon. Are you just inclined to acquiesce to his request? Is that what you're yes, saying? Well, you know, I don't, if called upon, I would answer the call, I'm sure. But on the other hand, we might have to make Mark do at least some of that. Yeah, that's true. Or Bob or Terry. Mm, yeah. I, I, I already have a lot of podcast stuff on my plate at the moment. You'd be surprised. <laughs> and we are... At our second okay. stretch goal, forty thousand dollars. Just now in time for Mark to vote Bob. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see how it is. Bye. Yeah, yeah, that. You're almost done with the crypt of the devil lich and everything, so you'll have time for this. Yes, yes. How many? Oh, so here's here's a here's a here's a question for you, Jen. How many new spells in the uh, in the rule book? Uh, counting the patrons, I think it was 41. 
41 new spells plus six in, so far including plus some rituals. yeah including yeah so 40, 47 new spells and at 50,000 we hit more curses and i love curses <laughs> curses are fun oh is wow. curses a new mechanic curses are uh, for witches um and actually they're in the D their uh, curses are in the dcc core book hmm um, it's a second level cleric spell well, but it's but also yeah. witches just get curses. Um, That's true, they have individual curses. If you look at the witch stats under the men and magicians in the back of the monsters, they get curses. And so there's Appendix C, which is all yeah, Appendix curses. C. Uh, but the curse spell is what gives you access to that. But in this case, witches get Ensqualm which is a level one spell that acts very much like curse. It's just kind of a, a class bonus thing. Very cool. And of course, there's three levels to curses, so they can get really, really ugly. <laughs> it depends on which DC you hit. You might have access to, you know, this list or anything above that, you know, depending on how well you roll. Uh, will the DCC day Dying Earth Adventure be available through the Goodman Games store or just at participating stores? That's a really great question. Uh, this Matt Young, um, I would say uh, try the Goodman Games store like first thing in the morning. You could possibly at least get like the PDF version of it. You mean I, the, this adventure? Yeah, the adventure pack. There's a small amount left that will be available for sale on the website. That's last I heard from John Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I think they go on. So many went to stores. If there's mm -hmm. uh if there are some left, I think they go on sale, you know, after DCC day, but they go fast. Uh Hector would like to know if there's any mechanics that didn't get shown off tonight that we really like. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Jen didn't cast any curses. <laughs> there wasn't <laughs> So yeah, we didn't we didn't get the, the curses I, are fun. I was going to cast in Squalm before uh odd kind got dropped, and I, I realized I should probably use transfer vitality instead. No, no, no I appreciate that. I did. Actually, there are, there are two that I really like, both involving character death. So one is that Sweet. the that thing, if he if he dies and fails his flip the body roll gets a second luck check to be re you know resurrected out of his creator's vat again so i which i think now you're not going to be in the in the middle of the action you're going to may have to travel to find your friends or you may say the hell with them but, but you get to keep your character but you get to keep your character which is kind of cool and then also the uh, magician uh if destroyed rolls on the reincarnation table to see if his intense preparation for extending his vitality is remunerated by the fates. So that's, uh, I think, also pretty cool. Um, had, had Klum perished tonight, we, we could have uh, made a quick reincarnation check just uh, as a coda, I suppose. And I, I have to say with the Wayfarer, I was excited. It didn't come up, but I'm excited to try in the future the wits and rhetoric, because um, the Wayfarer gets a ret rhetorical deed die so if oh, I'm in yeah. a social setting and I'm trying to bargain for maybe a, a better room at the inn or a better price on my ale or whatever, anything social, uh, I can choose to roll a essentially a rhetorical deed die and um, try to get, you know, have the conversation turned in my favor. Uh, but if you roll a one on that deed die, it's a, it backfires on you uh, <laughs> and you end up in a worse bargaining position than you had started in. So that was one of the Wayfarer ones that I'm excited to see in the future. And then, of course, the Wayfarer's luck is really cool, too. And we, we like, just touched on that in tonight's adventure, but that'll be something to, uh, to check out. Once yeah, you sunk your teeth into that. I was really impressed. I, I found it a little bit daunting myself. But yeah the, you jumped into that one. No, and you guys all did a great job. I, you know, I appreciate you... Uh, digging into these mechanics, learning some new stuff. Um, and everybody did a terrific job. And let's say um, this, you know, the extra rules discussion we've been saying is great. Uh, everything is still playtest. So the stuff you see here, I think we're going to keep almost all of it. 
but you know, little little rules might get tweaked, might get uh, you know uh, perfected, polished, and so on. Um, you know, curses are going to be there. Demon summoning is going to be there. Rhetoric die is going to be there. Wayfair luck stealing is going to be there. Pattern die is going to be there. Rote magic and amplification. You know, oh, yeah. grudge tokens or or something of that flavor. Well, grudge tokens, I think we're going to definitely be there, but we we're only arguing about the name. So tell us if you like grudge tokens. Im, you know, impertinent, unanticipated impertinences. Um, they're, consequential they're, coins. Yeah. Um, and, and those didn't come up too much, Julian. Did you want to describe like how you gain those and lose them? Because I don't think yeah. we ever gained any. Um, yeah. So it's a little bit like fleeting luck. It is, uh, but it's almost an inverse, which is to the, um, the inverse of it is, so it works like this. Um, anytime anybody rolls a one, a natural one, that uh, character receives a grudge token, uh, and that which basically uh, represents your pissed offness at the world, your resentment at the imprecations of fate, right? And uh, then you can spend that grudge token to force uh, anybody else to re-roll a successful roll. And notice it has to be successful. So you can't spend it to help your friends. You can only spend it to make the bad guys screw up or to screw up your friends uh you know so that so it's it's only that kind of thing now also the judge is allowed to give you grudge tokens to represent the fact that you've been screwed over which is basically it's all sort of elided in the first part of the adventure but you were abandoned in your ship and so forth so we started out everybody with the grudge token also so we could see the mechanic in play also speaking um, of mechanics um since there's different types of VAT things, right? I was I was a martial VAT thing, so my pattern die goes into uh, my hit and damage. But there's also paragons who add to all of their skill checks, and there's the theologues who add it to their spell checks. That, no, that's a really good point. So the VAT so thing there's, is, there's a lot yeah. of variety. The VAT thing is almost kind of like three classes, right? Because you've got yeah. a sort of the skill monkey one it has a little bit of thief like stuff and and all the, or almost more bard like right because it's just got every skill type yeah. thing and then the the one that's more wizardly and has more spell casting i figured marshall in this party because then there's uh, kill things and eat their hearts yeah. yeah then there's kill things and eat their hearts which is uh, which is pretty nice which is favorite of Oh, and the witch is kind of a, a take on the cleric because of the transfer vi vitality and instead of things like disapproval you get that demonic taint counter which then if i roll in that one on a spell instead of corruption i roll demonic corruption and add the total of uh, demonic taint points that i've accumulated so far uh, but i also have demonic associations and sympathetic uh, which means i can summon the demons but the pact or the entity that I make a pact with might not be a demon. It could be an entity that is known on the overworld or just kind of somewhere in the middle. It, it might not be celestial, but that would be the denotation of the three different alignments that we have in DCC. And each of the spells has a, a little mark on uh, which alignment it is most sympathetic with. And since something like darkness was my, my primary sympathetic spell, I got to roll that on a die higher than usual. And then I had to pick something else to roll on a lower die. Indeed. So it kind of balances. Yeah. No, you have the, you have the special, it's almost a little specialized in, in what terms of magic because of your patron, uh, your uh, pacted entity. But I don't have any spells that are set at a certain level, like rote magic. Right. So the, right. the witch doesn't have any of those. It's in its own category. Um, and then there's the ritual spell burn, which is still kind of being mussed about, but essentially it allows me to dedicate life essence from someone who's recently fallen to my entity and it allows me to bank some points of spell burn that I can use later. And I think the 
the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is that you could still play DCC classes in Dying Earth. And some of you may have heard me say it before, but my favorite is the cleric, because there's a really good chance on the Dying Earth that your god's already dead. <laughs> or he's just an angry vat thing. <laughs> or, or he's just resting and he needs you to go drum up some followers to uh, raise cognition of him and make him powerful again. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Otis, what did you think of the magician class? Oh, I, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I especially like uh, casting, uh, you know, fancy and spells. It's fun. <laughs> and the, the amplification die is a really, or dice, I should say, is a really fun little gamble mechanic, too. That's uh, That definitely uh, adds a little spice to it if you want to, you know, if the road thing gets a little too, you know, like, oh, God, this thing again at a 12, you know, you're like, well, you know, you could... Well, yeah, it's important to note that with rote magic, uh, magicians and bat things and the like, if it's rote magic, you can't spell burn to increase the result. Right? Oh, that's it. That's right. your result. Right, so that's right. where the amplification die comes in. Or yeah, that's where magicians get an amplification. Yeah, know. that's true. <laughs> and magicians also have the option when they level up, kind of like an MCC where you would roll again for that mutation. Hmm. Yeah, you can try to rememorize it at a different level when you level up because you get that bonus to your spellcasting again. Right. So, so when I if I if I had cast Chill Touch, which requires a spell burn, mm -hmm. um, then I'm a magician and I can't do it. Well, no, it just it wouldn't increase. Normally, uh, spell burn adds to your yeah. spell check result, and it, it doesn't add to it. It just wouldn't add to the result. Okay. But what's interesting would be Clume when he grew in level. Could you probably I forget which spells, but you have some spells that don't have a very good result right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you could try to then rememorize those at a better result and then they'd be more attractive for you to memorize yeah. each day right yeah, and then right. so you sort of build your knowledge and so you the first level you have six spells that you sort of know but you get crappy results on three or four of them you know you get to take another shot at second level third level and so on as you go once per level power. yeah oh, yes. so that's kind of fun and in addition of course to getting more spells accessed anyway and um, Julian, you mentioned the spell provenance, where you have all of these different uh, authors of the spells mm. making it really fancy. And instead of corruption on, on those, if you roll a nat one, you end up with wizardly objurgation. And we've also got rules in here for uh, summoning and control, controlling, uh, bartering with uh, sandestins. Mm, as well yeah. as creating your own spells. So this gives players a, so a cut and dry mechanic for creating a spell of your choice or something with the manifestation that you want. Mm. You can personalize it. I yeah, never... which really makes your caster yours. Yeah, exactly. I, I haven't run a game with Sandestins yet, but I'm going to really i didn't have enough out. personality to burn or you would have tonight that's <laughs> well, a possible result oh on yeah the, that uh, is on, the, on con on, yeah on the on the creator but it's what is it wow. oh yeah it's that's, it's pretty high though second to high i think you get a minor right uh, Destin. let's see uh, uh, yeah at a 28 the creator sends a minor sandestin to aid its creation and it can cast any first level spell with a plus eight spell check but Sandestins are more uh, kind of the, the chore goers. They, they aren't much for physical combat. How and well are they at taking orders? Because they don't like to take orders, but I guess they do follow no. them generally. No. Uh, especially it's like if it's, if it's sent, right? By, by your creator. <laughs> yeah. Although my favorite is the, the top level with a 32 or more the bat things creator records the pattern of a number of its allies up to the caster level of the vat thing. Next time a recorded ally black bleeds out or dies, they're replaced by a clone of the original in 1D3 days, retaining all levels, abilities, and spells possessed at the time of the death, but no memories of their former self. Hey, Bob. 
you get more courses. Yes, yeah. we, we have we have surpassed fifty thousand. Look at five hundred and sixteen backers. We so get more curses. Next Yay. up is more patrons. And more patrons is next, and you know what comes with more patrons? Four. Four. We currently have four: um, Pandalum, Kron, the Pragmatica, and Utha. Ooh, yeah. Kron, the, yeah, 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 the, the, yeah. The uh, yeah. fiend. Yeah. So, yeah. Bob, did that spell you described let you turn? other player characters into that things upon their death or was that just resurrecting yourself as a bat uh, well no so so that's um invoke patron or invoke creator which is the bat things version of invoke patron and what happens is my creator records your patterns and clones and clones the dead ally so they're still not i, I suppose technically they're a bat thing but they're not created in the same way you're cloned as a as a uh, as a okay. boon that's really interesting. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of, of neat stuff with, I mean, all the classes that when, when you get up to the higher levels of the things they can do, get really, really, I don't want to say strange, because I think it gives the wrong connotation, but they get very, very wild and different. Where in DCC, there is kind of a regular progression of, and boy, have I seen that regular progression running seventh level characters for uh, Crypt of the Devil Lich. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but they start branching out interesting and weird ways. Those 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 abilities and powers get kind of strange and different, and uh, it, it just sort of adds, I think, to the entire vibe uh, of, yeah. of of a world gone by. Well, and there's a lot of uh, personalization of magic that the magician can do at higher levels, and and all that stuff. So that that becomes part of the game at that point. Interesting. I'm just looking at. I'm just excited about the this rhetorical die. I'm trying to see, does it I'm trying to find its level chart? So, so it's fun. So the rhetorical die. The funny thing is that uh, you only need a two to succeed on the rhetoric die, but a one is always a total backfire. So you're always kind of gambling with fate. You just your chance of getting a total disaster starts at one out of three and uh, goes. You know, uh, gets lower and lower as you, as you go on. Yeah, once you get up to that third level and it's like a D5, then it feels pretty safe. Like, yeah. I was just thinking about all the home games that I would have loved to have a rhetorical die in uh, while you, bartering you, with you, you, <laughs> you pretty much try to use that anyway, Clint. It's just <laughs> more know. like, uh, this is just, we're just adding mechanics. To I know. It. If, only, if only I had it, maybe I wouldn't have had to drink swamp juice in a previous game. So, <laughs> you know, if you'd been a fifth level loquacitor, you would have been fine, but... Uh... <laughs> all right guys um well this has been terrific we uh we really appreciate everybody's hanging out with us uh we love the questions we of course appreciate um all the support um yeah. from from the watchers and from the backers um and i think we're about ready to wrap it up um is there a any lot of fun thanks julian yeah thank Hello, you players. and thanks everybody yeah, this was for a good time for being here with us um i'm just gonna check in and, and boy there's gonna be a lot of dying earth content on on this twitch channel over like the next month oh yeah we have uh and let's some see planned events and some surprise events we've got um a literary discussion we've got what Sanctum else is going on reading room yeah yes 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 um that that is going to be great so um yeah there's going to be plenty of action on here over the next month and uh oh and i think there are going to be some i think there's going to be some road crew events done some actual plays or something too as well that'd be fantastic so mm -hmm. uh, that can also be fun and as Jen mentioned, there's there's a few surprises in the works as well. There's there's going to be a lot of fun on, during this Kickstarter, and I mean it's just started, and I mean we're already you know, more than twice what the what the asking goal was. So and happy DCC day, everybody! <laughs> yes, happy DCC day Saturday. Um, we will uh, holiday of our people. A lot of us are getting back to other DCC stuff, at least for a day. I'm running some X crawl on Saturday, so hey. uh, I'm going to have a blast, and uh, that that should be a, a really good time. It's going to um, be my return to in-person gaming. Yeah, oh, there's going to be a lot nice. of that, which is also excellent. 
And I think I'm going to run Julian's adventure, uh, The Legend of the Silver Skull. Oh, good luck to them. That's all I can <laughs> say. Good luck. To, that's, a, that's a tough one. You're on your own, guys. Don't blame me. Blame Jen. It was all her. Well, thanks, everybody. So on behalf of uh, the Dark Master and uh, the Dark Bruner, uh, we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we've had a great time. And uh, thanks so much. Good night, everybody. See you guys.